I want you to think about the strongest person you know. What if you began to see that person deteriorate due to an illness that completely takes over their life? This was something I began to think about on June 22, 2019, when my father was diagnosed with stage 3 pancreatic cancer. My father, my rock, my biggest inspiration, and above all, Superman, was diagnosed with an illness that 57,600 Americans are diagnosed with every single year and only have a five-year survival rate of 5%. In this speech, I will be talking about my father's journey and how he has taught me two valuable principles that I will value and cherish for the rest of my life. On June 22, 2019, my father went into a medical procedure known as an endoscopy, and this is where the patient is asleep and the doctors insert a camera into the mouth so they can examine the patient internally. Going into this procedure, my family and I believed that my father was experiencing some gallbladder issues, but unfortunately that was not the case. Later that day, I received a phone call from my mother where she had told me that the doctors had found several tumors in my father's pancreas and that he would need to undergo stomach reconstructive surgery with 10 rounds of chemotherapy following thereafter. I, this included sitting in the hospital for eight hours once every two weeks and then coming home wearing a pack that would drip medication for two days. There would be times where I would purposely avoid seeing my father when he would come home from chemo because I didn't want him to see how everything was affecting me. I used to believe that I was the strong person and that nothing could penetrate my exterior wall. But just as I began to see my father deteriorate, so did my mental health. I fell into a deep depression that nobody knew. I spent countless nights crying before going to bed because it was the only time that I could truly show how I was feeling because during the day I had to be that support system for my parents and my younger sister. I began to imagine what my life would be like without my father, my birthdays, my high school graduations, and even my wedding day, because I had already come to terms with what the outcome was going to be. And just like my mental health was suffering, so did my relationship with God. I was so angry with him for the longest time because I wanted to know why, out of all the people in the world, he had chosen my father because he didn't deserve this. I stopped praying, I stopped going to church, and I completely shut God up. But this is when my father taught me principle number one, that God will always have a plan for us and that he never gives us anything that we cannot handle. He taught me that God only gives the strongest ones the hardest obstacles because he knows that we will not give up easily, but that we will continue to fight to survive. And a little shortly after this conversation, my father completed his 10 rounds of chemo on February in 2020. He rang that bell in the hospital and was cancer free for 11 months. However, on January 21st, what was a routine CT scan for my father ended up being a scan that confronted my family with another obstacle. My father was diagnosed with liver cancer. The scan showed no new signs of growths in my father's pancreas, but did show three new spots in his liver. At that moment, all of my fear and my anger came rushing back came rushing back because we had come such a long way just to end up back at square one. And with all of this information being given, the only thing I could question myself was how come the cancer came back in a new spot than the one that was originated? Well, this is because my father was diagnosed with metatastasis cancer, and this is where the cancer spreads. With that being said, my father was born with a gene the tumors had already been connected to. And with that being genetic, that means that my sister and I are at a higher risk of getting breast and ovarian cancer. After many doctor's appointments and medical exams, my father was told that his oncologist would no longer be able to help him, and that the next step would be going and seeing a liver specialist. In meeting with a liver specialist, we were told that chemotherapy and surgeries would no longer be useful, and that put such a dark cloud on my family and I because the future was blurry and we didn't know what our next step was going to be. But with all of the support from our family and friends back at home, my father was able to get a second opinion at MD Anderson Cancer Center back home in Houston, Texas. When my father was first diagnosed for the second time, it instilled a fear in me that I had never felt before. But this is when my father taught me principle number two, that we must never live our lives in fear because the only thing to fear is fear itself. If we live our lives in fear, then we're never going to get anywhere. If we live our lives in fear, then we're never going to get anywhere. We must take these chances and these leaps of faith in order to defeat these obstacles and to continue pushing forward. And as I have mentioned before, my father is the strongest person I know. 
because when all hope was lost, he continued to push forward. He taught me that God will always have a plan for us and that everything happens for a reason and that we must never live our lives in fear because if we do, we'll never get anywhere. I learned that in order to beat our obstacles, we must be mentally strong because our mentality is what's going to get us through these hard times. I know that my father will continue to fight. He will be amongst the 5% that will beat this illness. And as Bob Marley once said, we don't know how strong we are until being strong is the only choice that we have. Thank you. All right, Cameron. How am I supposed to go after that? Okay, stop <laughs> that. We're not comparing. Well, what you're supposed to do is get up there and give your speech. So, anything interesting going on? Nothing that you can think of. Okay, all right. Did you get up at 5.15 this morning? Um, no, I got up at 6.30. Okay. So Genesis is the only one that got up that early. Okay. He's not sleeping now. I'll wake you up next time. I'll wake everyone up next time. We'll all walk together. <laughs> <laughs>